Uh, welcome students to my lecture number 53. In fact, uh, after discussing with you about uh, the implements at various aspects uh, of testing etcetera, uh, I have come uh, forward to give you some idea about uh, conservation agriculture. Now, this conservation agriculture is very important so far as machines are concerned because what we are interested in, we would like uh, that the minimum with minimum cost we should be in a position to produce maximum that is the aim. So, in this conservation agriculture what do we mean? What we want to conserve? This is what is important. So, let us go through the uh, few slides which I have got for you and the considerations which we do when we are talking of conservation agriculture. So, agriculture production and sustainability concerns. What are the agriculture production and uh, sustainability concerns? This is very important. We would like to maintain the soil health because if the soil health is not good definitely nothing will come out of that. What are the water resources that we have? We must conserve our water resources. We must see that the water resources are full with water when we require. Then agroclimatic environment. What is the environment? At some point or the time the environment has an effect and today with all sorts of global warming and a lot of noxious gases being produced because of the vehicles etcetera, the whole environment is very much affected. So, this also affects our uh, um, agro production and the farm size. Now, I have put farm size particularly here with respect to agriculture production and sustainability concerns. Well, farm size does not come so much, but I have particularly put it here because this also plays a role. If you have a small farm, then what sort of considerations you need and if you have a large farm, then what are the considerations you need and that is why I felt relevant that this must also be put in the sustainability concerns. What are the threat to the natural resources? What may happen? See, land degradation has taken place over the period of uh, time. We, we, I need not uh, elaborate much, but I can just show you that see 5 billion tons of soil and 6 million tons of nutrient loss is reported every year. Now, see what happens because of the various uh, uh, degradation methods, various methods which people are using for various aspects of uh, uh, infrastructure. Uh, um, uh, creation or for roads, uh, various kinds, various things has happened. We would like to get the soil moved from one location to another location and uh, maybe application of the chemicals over the period. So much of the several billion tons uh, and um, of uh, material has been uh, spoiled. Protection of the crop top uh, soil, especially in rain fed area, is most crucial. Yes. We want to protect because the crop is going to grow within the top uh, soil and we must see that uh, that crop uh, that the top uh, portion top soil is congenial for growth which is important. So, this while we consider the land degradation, degradation what is our concern with respect to the soil health is the top soil especially in rain fed areas where uh, when there is rain there is water, if there is no rain there is no water. So, though there uh, where there is no um, source of uh, um, irrigation, then we have to be careful about this. Conventional practices, what we are doing, as I said, we are uh, degrading the land, what we are doing? Excessive soil tillage, we have been doing, uh, so far we have been doing excessive soil tillage uh, and uh, this is what is shown here, that the tillage is uh, excessive, so far we have been doing. And then runoff uh, with these runoff losses, soil aeration and nutrient leaching, this is going to happen. Then straw burning, this is a big concern in, in our country here, uh, where loss of microorganisms, the environment is totally polluted and uh, this is very, very big concern in our country. You might have uh, read in papers and then several aspects, the whole government machinery is behind this in the particularly in the Delhi and NCR and Haryana and all the areas, lot of uh, this is going on, uh, not only uh, only that area, but that is very high in those uh, areas because of which the whole environment is got getting affected and lot of people are getting affected. So, the adverse consequences of on farm burning of this crop are in fact here emission of methane, carbon monoxide, nitrous oxide, oxides of nitrogen and sulfur. Now, these are all there and these are very uh, harmful to human being, human beings and all sorts of uh, uh, living creature. So, it is very important that 
we need to ch have a check on this land degrada degradation which we are doing over the period for our different activities or what we have done. So, what exactly we mean by conservation agriculture? I have given a small uh, definition of this over here. I would like to just read for you. Conservation agriculture is a system of integrated management of what? The soil, water and biological resources combined with external inputs with a view to conserve natural resources. So, what exactly we are doing? Do? So, soil, water and biological um, uh, resources need to be maintained and then only you are talking of the conservation agriculture. Whatever you are doing, you must produce at the same time maintain these uh, in good health, so that you have sustainability of production over a period of time. That is the main concern. It's achieved is crop production that strives to achieve acceptable profits together with high and sustained production. That is the important part as I said. Yes, this is what we want. That while we take care of these, if you take care of these, parameter the soil, water and biological uh, resources, if you take care of them properly and then do cultivation and uh, minimize inputs and maximize uh, target maximum production, so that the sustainability of the produce out of that land remains over a longer period of time as far as possible. That is the main aim and that is what is known as conservation agriculture. So, if we put this in this particular uh, in the form that we have put here. Conservation agriculture at the center means the continuous cover residue or cover of the crop, then plant diversity or crop rotation. You need to look into this, the minimum or soil disturbance. So, you do you take care of the soil health over here, you take care of the, uh, the uh, plant diversity, uh, diversity so that the crop use a proper crop rotation, and then the, cut, uh, the residues, crop residues, what you have should be uh, properly taken care of so that they conserve the moisture. So, you, you reduce on the water requirement and then use the uh, moisture which is available after the one of the crops is harvested. Benefits of conservation agriculture, where as I said in fact, if you add all these are all benefits. If you are going to talk about the soil, if you are going to talk about the crop rotation that you should take and the, the moisture which you want to conserve through the crop residue which you have got, all these are going to give you uh, benefits in terms of erosion of the soil erosion will be controlled, then uh, weeds will be minimum, then uh, the moisture will be remained for a longer period of time, then crop will definitely increase. We find that about 4 to 6 percent crop increases environment as such the total environment where along with the crop you, you are also going to stay, we are all going to stay in the environment. So, that environment is also protected and crop diversity opportunities, we should think of crop diversification opportunities where we should think of multi cropping, we should think of uh, different crop rotations, we should think of intercropping and in such a way that the soil health is maintained. For example, if you take leguminous crop then nitrogen fixation takes place and that is very essential for the next crop if you take. So, you can save on the nitrogen when you apply next time. So, that is very important. Therefore, these are extreme benefits of conservation agriculture if you talk of the uh, maintaining of the uh, all these parameters over a period of time. Conservation tillage, well I, I told earlier that uh, we are doing lot of tillage. So, conservation tillage is important that means, uh, I would say that you should do minimum tillage, you should do no tillage. In fact, you should try to see the amount of tillage which is just required for that. So, this is the concept which says, when is that the 30 percent soil cover by residue planting. Now, we need to know that uh, how much is the uh, actual amount required for uh, tillage and that should be done. If you, if you just go on tilling the land uh, just like that each time, then you are uh, increasing your tillage energy at the same time you are also damaging the soil. So, the important thing is plowing and soil turnover from conventional tillage are major concern for CO2 emissions. Now, it is very important soil turnover and conventional tillage 
are major reasons for uh, CO2 emissions. Now, we have to uh, uh, check on these aspects. Conservation can be achieved by then what we do, how do we achieve uh, soil conservation or the conservation uh, agriculture, what exactly means is soil conservation. Till, a, till no more than necessary as I said, till the only when soil moisture is in a favorable limit and then vary the depth of tillage to overcome compaction. So, it should not be very highly compacted, it would you know, create problem for germination of the crop. So, this is very important when you are talking of conservation agriculture, the t conservation tillage first aspect. Mechanization strategy in conservation agriculture, well um, uh, here I just like to tell you that uh, I have been biased towards uh, mechanization as such because when we are talking of maintaining of the soil health and also talking of uh, not uh, disturbing the uh, environment, we what is that which is disturbing the uh, environment? What is that which is distru disturbing the soil health? It is the equipment which we do, it is the uh, operations which we do. Once the crop has come, we are going to weed the crop and then harvest the crop and thresh the crop and keep it here. But what is that which happens before that? It is the tilling of the land. What sort of tilling you should do? What sort of equipment you should use? What should be the design of that equipment? So, that is why it becomes very imperative that the mechanization strategy must be very clear and concrete in conservation agriculture. We must have an idea about which machine to use and when. So, this is what uh, is given as I said that we would like to say paddy is harvested. Then uh, immediately after that there is proper uh, enough moisture in the soil and at that time if you simply uh, open a, sl a slit and put the seeds of wheat it will simply grow. So, that is what is said that uh, you should have a machine. Now, here is a machine which does this job zero seed comfort as a drill here. This is the one which is very effective and very widely used. Similarly, uh, another um, equipment of a similar type which is there, which cuts the uh, any cuts the front uh, certain portion of the uh, the small stubbles which are there, and then uh, seeds. So these are uh, some of the uh, very popular equipment which are used for uh, conservation agriculture. Minimum tillage, this is what uh, I think we have been talking of this time and again because minimum tillage, tilling of the soil and seeding, planting and performed a single operation when we are talking of minimum tillage, we are talking of no till drill, when we are talking of zero till drill, where we are talking of roto drill, when you are talking of steel till drill. Now, these are all the equipment which, um, which are helping us in doing what? Zero tillage virtually. So, that the tilling of soil and seeding planting are performed in a single operation in minimum tillage. The minimum tillage practices may progress from reducing the number of tillage passes to stop a still virtually. So, have minimum tillage passes as I said that you have to have. So, the other equipment which are available you can say uh, roto till deal it is a rotavator here in the front which will cut the, uh, the stubbles which are there and then the, um, the furrow openers are there through which you can sow the seed or uh, fertilizer both. Similarly, here you can see that this uh, uh, slit is there by uh, slit is created by these and this one will try to smother the small uh, stubbles which are there and then you can sow the seed uh, through seed and fertilizer uh, hopper is here and you have the same seed fertilizer system which you can see separately. So, these are the some of the equipment which are used for minimum tillage. These are all uh, towards uh, minimum uh, disturbance to the soil and uh, no degradation of the soil, but maintain the health of the soil that is important. Mulch tillage, well um, as I told you that you would like to do some sort of mulching sometimes when um, uh, stable uh, mulch, sometimes with the stubbles which are cut there you would like to keep them for some time and conserve the moisture. So, that is what it is written here. So, mulch tillage is nothing but stubble mulch tillage involves cutting the roots of the weeds and other plants and leaving them crop the crop residue on the surface and mixed into crop uh, top 
uh, few centimeters of the soil. So, this is the portion which is then you can say that you are mulching, uh, mulch tillage if you maintain that. Chief objective mulch tillage are to reduce wind and water erosion, very important and this uh, uh, to conserve water by reducing runoff. So, this will you know, help the, con the mulch tillage will help you to conserve on the uh, uh, erosion of the soil because of the wind or because of the water etcetera. And the practice widely accepted in the great plains and arid and semi arid regions this mulch tillaging where particularly in dry areas, areas dry regions where they are only dependent on the only dependent on the, uh, the aspect of rainwater. So, these are important you can see one photograph which is given over here it talks of the mulching which is given in this particular crop and uh, you can see this once where the mulching is maintained. So, mulch tillage is also a practice which is important for conservation agriculture. For irrigated raised bed uh, farming system, yes, this is another thing uh, because uh, furrow irrigation is done and raised bed farming system. Uh, well, we, we do this, we have the equipment uh, here and through this equipment in fact, we are in a position to do. Now, some of the other equipment for residue management, now this is another equipment for residue management. See stubble saver, you can, you can have a look at this. You can see that this is going to maintain stubble here. Similarly, uh, this is another equipment which is for rotary slicer. Now, these uh, stubble shavers, rotary slicer, these are going to actually um, for residue management, what residue you are left, they will uh, say for example, if you operate this, this will cut the into a very carpet sort of thing and very small um, sized reduction of the grasses or weeds which will be there and they will be left over there. So, that way also you can say conserve uh, the moisture of the soil which is there. So, these equipment are also used and known as residue management equipment which are uh, there. Carbon sequestration. Now, what exactly we mean by this actually? Uh, well, we, we are talking of uh, this sink of carbon from the atmosphere to either plants or into the soil. This is what we are try, uh, trying to do. The sink of carbon from the atmosphere we want to take and uh, to mix with either plants or into the soil or from atmosphere to the soil is called carbon sequestration. Now, this is what we are looking trying to do. Now, what we do by this, uh, the <coughs> largest contribution to mitigate climate change with the conservation agriculture could be obtained from carbon sequestration and storage of atmospheric carbon in the soil. Yes, how do we do that? So, this is an aspect which is very important and uh, we must uh, strive to do this. On an average 0 0.1 to 0 0.5 tons per hectare per year of organic carbon can be captured under humid temperature conditions from the atmosphere. So, this is one important thing which must be looked into when you are talking of conservation agriculture. So, you must employ the methods and mechanisms by which you should be in a position to conserve the carbon or get the carbon of the atmosphere and get uh, into your soil. This is very important. What are the benefits of this? Uh, in, in fact, uh, what are the benefits of this um, uh, carbon sequestration? Now, the benefits could be maximum because what we want is you are interested in having the uh, uh, the details uh, the carbon more and more inside the soil. So, the agricultural carbon sequestration may be one of the most cost effective way to slow the process of global warming, very important global warming. Increasing soil carbon storage can increase infiltration rate, fertility and nutrients of the soil. Yes, we will be able to increase the nutri nutritional quality of the soil, then decrease wind and water erosion, this is what we want to mean. Minimize the compaction of the soil. Yes, we would like to minimize the compaction because uh, harder and harder the soil becomes, it will be di difficult to um, sow the seeds and we will have to do tillage. So, the compaction level must be uh, to the extent that we can control this. Then decrease the, uh, uh, well, the minimize compaction, enhance water quality. Yeah, we should try to see that the quality of water which is being used is, is a good quality water. 
decrease the carbon emissions which are there as much as possible. We should be trying to do this. Then impede pesticide movement and enhance environmental quality. Now, these are the things which we, we need to do or we do it for, uh, for uh, the benefits of car for uh, you can say that conservation agriculture. So, as such if we look into what conservation agriculture is, we can see that we want that maximum moisture of the soil must be maintained. We must maintain the soil health, we must maintain the nutrients which are there in the soil. These are important because until unless you maintain these properly, you are not going to get a good crop and for that what should you do? So, you should not in fact uh, as uh, we have seen that we are going to disturb the soil. The degradation of soil has taken place a lot and this degradation must be, must be looked into, must be taken care of and for that what are the equipment. So, we have talked of the various equipment that they are there and what are the uh, designs and types which are there, what sort of benefits they give and how they should be used and what is mulch and mulching because mulching is another aspect of uh, tillage, mulch tillage which tries to maintain the, uh, the moisture. Some areas where the irrigation is not possible, the areas which are um, totally dependent on only uh, 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 rain, rain water, there you have to have. So, dry land agriculture we call, which we call of dry land agriculture, what is this dry land agriculture? We are trying to conserve these. So, we would like to have mulching, we would like to trap the um, carbon of the atmosphere into our soil and see that we are in a position to do a good quality uh, conservation agriculture and have the these things in uh, common. Now, I think uh, this way we have tried to give you some idea about carbon uh, I mean conservation agriculture as such this uh, you may not find in many books uh, this pa portion, but then what I can say that it I found it uh, very um, essential and an uh, essential input as well as very just for giving you some idea about conservation agriculture. You might say that uh, the, this does not come into machi farm machinery. In fact, I would say it does come into farm machinery because we have uh, talked of the mechanization with respect to uh, not degradation of the soil. So, what sort of tillage machines you should use, what sort of machines you should use for uh, maintaining this condition of the soil and other aspects the way we have discussed about reclamation of the land. When we discussed about reclamation of land, when we are reclamating land for uh, our um, crop, what we should maintain, where uh, our water resources should be properly maintained, what are the other biological resources which should be maintained. So, all these aspects have to be taken into consideration that and that is why I wanted that uh, we must have some lecture on conservation agriculture as an uh, as an agriculture engineer you must have idea about this. If you um, go into various types in various countries you will find different types of different uh, equipment depending on the size of the farm. See we have not talked of the size of the farm here, but size of the farm is very important because when you talk of the tillage machines which are to be taken the size of the farm is important. Uh, in, in countries where it is very difficult to have bigger machines or the farmers who have very very less amount of uh, uh, area or farm size, they would like to get small machines and in fact, in uh, areas the small uh, equipment and devices are used for total cultivation of the crop, whether you talk of a, a cereal crop or you are talking of a vegetable crop or you are talking of a root crop and so on and so forth. So, the farm size is another important uh, aspect which must be considered in conservation agriculture that is what I have thought of. And that is why this lecture I wanted to share with you my knowledge with respect to conservation agriculture. I am sure that uh, at least some idea you have got, you might have certain questions we would like to uh, consider as and when they uh, come up. But then uh, I, I think uh, we will try to uh, stop here and we will we'll, uh, look forward for your questions. Uh, thank you.